My name is Chukwe Mekaize. I'm a co-founder of Revive Earth Limited. Revive Earth Limited is a startup based in Enugu State, Nigeria. We focus on making um, electric vehicles and currently we are focused on retrofitting already existing tricycles, providing them to run on pure battery electricity. Um, I consider myself a tinkerer and um, I started off as a young boy who was very passionate about getting hands on and um, putting stuff together, batteries uh, I picked from the streets, spoiled batteries. And then we believed that if you put them under the sun, it, it will recharge again. And I used them to do this little, little projects like light up LEDs. Uh, at the time, I didn't know what they were. I struggled to get through primary school. And when I finished, I couldn't even go to secondary school. My father was already making arrangements for me to go and learn a skill. And because of what he saw me as, he thought the perfect place for me would be in a radio mechanic workshop. So he already concluded arrangements for me to go there. But then one of my, one of my, my relatives was a teacher who was in close um, touch with my teachers in primary school. He said she came around one night, just the night before the resumption of school that year, uh, that new term, and she said she, she wouldn't sit back and watch me go to, to learn anything. She, she, she feels that I should further school and got admission to the University of Nigeria, not even into engineering. Because my score in jam was poor, I got admission to um, combined physical sciences. <laughs> So, and why I, I decided to buy change of course form then to combine physical sciences was because I, I, saw, I saw that I could easily combine two courses that were related to engineering and make my way to engineering after my first year. So I went ahead to meet the HOD of electrical engineering and it was uh, Professor Jogo at the time, it was in 2015. So he assured me that if, I, if my GP was up to 3.5, I could continue with uh, second year electrical engineering students and not go back to first year. Eventually it worked out. That was how I became an electrical engineering student. But then I was already, I kind of, I already understood the system. I was going to school with this mindset that engineering would be hands-on, that I would become a professional in getting hands-on. And all those things that I used to imagine were possible. I, I could actually learn to do them on my own. And I began to tinker with my computer, searching the internet, YouTube and everything. And what I would search for would be things related to circuit design. And I stumbled into embedded systems. But then when I, I started um, exploring that area, I started um, the works of Tesla kept reoccurring on my searches. And I picked interest on, on it because before then I didn't know that it was possible to have an all electric vehicle that didn't need fuel at all. So I started studying Tesla and I saw that the work of Tesla was almost perfect. It's something that is competitive, something that could stand side by side with the already existing vehicles that have been under development for years. And then I began to learn that even the electric vehicles have been in existence even far before the gasoline vehicles. So Tesla leveraged on all these technologies to build a complete system, a computer on wheels, as they called it. But then what significant thing they did is not the technology, it is the commercialization of electric vehicles, all electric vehicles in a scale that nobody could argue with. So they were able to actually develop a, a market, kind of build a market from scratch. So um, going through school, it, it was very challenging because the finances were not very forthcoming. And I would quickly, I would from time to time go to embark on personal projects um, on one design or the other to try it out, see how, see how it works. Sometimes I'll burn my hand, sometimes I'll burn my mouth, get electrocuted. And then each time I spring up and I continue. I came to Greenwich in 2018 
to do my um, mandatory internship. I started making automatic transfer switches for, for homes. I saw that the generator in the house, which I, I would be the person to stay awake to make sure I turn off the generator. There were some works, some, some stuff going on on circuit design, and one of them had, someone, one of them was related to automatic transfer. So I quickly picked that up and developed one to solve that problem. I, I sold a number of them. I, I started DreamFix technologies for domestic use, like automatic transfer switch that would switch between um, the normal public supply and generator. It's an automatic transfer switch. What it basically does is to switch power. It's like what your changeover does in your house. It's actually an automatic changeover. So it switches power between your public um, supply, NEPA, and generator automatically. Like this um, module that you can use to enter numbers into the system. And those numbers will tell the system, I want my gen to run for two hours. Or I want my gen to run for four hours. So I don't have to stay awake waiting for the, for the time to off the gen. And the plan was to sell those devices, make similar devices, and try to raise money on our own to go into immobility. As now final year students in school, we're introduced to a pilot scheme that was championed by the National Automotive Design and Development Council, the NADDC. And the scheme was to challenge universities in Nigeria to come up and demonstrate some capacity to champion electric vehicle research and development for commercialization. The forerunner of this um, program was engineer Professor Zimunani, and he quickly um, gathered those students then. And because I was already working on that, I found it like a calling to, to try to do something out of the ordinary, something in, in a higher scale from what I've been doing all this while. The good thing is, the project was successful. By July of 2019, we unveiled a fully functional electric vehicle. And that one was built from scratch. Both the chassis and the body, as clumsy as it looked, everything was built from scratch. So it was, um, it was very exciting for me because I, the kind of audience we had then motivated me to look at, look at it deep, more deeply. The beginning of 2021, where we first saw that the time we spent working on, working with the professor back in school was not a waste. Because most of the papers, most of the paperwork we did, we were able to relate them to what is obtainable in the market. And the first potential we saw was the tricycle market. Because we discovered that tricyclists, from that data we had, it means that tricycle, tricyclists could save up to 60% of their um, fueling cost by using electric vehicles. We didn't see the other part, the other aspects of that comparison outrightly. It was much later that we started see, seeing that they could even save on maintenance like, because they don't have to work on their engine anymore. They don't have to work on things like um, um, oil, change oil every week, work on piston and rings, work on carburetor, or work on their um, spark plug. Or, or, or rings, or fibers, stuff like that. And it, it, now, it now motivated me to see how we could commercialize electric vehicles, how we could make tricycles. And the easiest way we saw was to retrofit already existing ones because the market had a lot of tricycles. It would be, it, it, we saw it as it would be difficult to convince the, the larger people who already are using um, tricycles, who already have, probably they already have enough, maybe in terms of their plan or something, to buy our electric tricycles. We discovered that we can take these uh, tricycles, the existing ones on the road, maybe the ones that their engines have gone bad, and remove the engine, or remove parts of the engine, and connect an electric motor to the crankshaft. And this electric motor was to be powered by batteries through an electronic controller. So this controller is like an inverter, like the type you see here, that takes power from the battery 
and gives modulates it to give different uh, levels to the load. And in this case now, the load is the motor. We now have, uh, you now have plenty of these in series. Okay. And each of them in that connection is monitored so that it, it does not overcharge and it doesn't over discharge. So I, I, connect the, I connect the controller here, the controller chip here, and then connect this guy to my computer. So my computer provides the power and also the data transfer. So once the program, the chip is programmed, I'll take it to the circuit. Once we get this tricycle, we remove some of the engine components, connect the electric motor to the crankshaft, then um, connect the batteries, and then every other thing that is needed. Then to now maintain the auxiliary systems that um, already exist in the tricycle, because we don't have to go and start wiring it again since it is already wired. So what we just do is to get a DC to DC converter. Normally the tricycle has a battery that powers the auxiliary system, but we no longer need that battery since we already have a central battery. So from that central battery, we now connect a DC to DC converter that now gives us the power we need to power the auxiliary system because the auxiliary system is all on a different voltage level than the central battery. That's why the DC converter is there. So um, then once this is done, um, we carry out the testing that is, that is required. And once that is perfected, the vehicle is ready to be used. So the, the camera is an independent system, but then it is linked to the, to the user. It could be revived mobility or an independent, independent merchant who decides to have his own system operating. So if you, as a merchant, has bought maybe 10 tricycles that you want to have these systems on, you can give them to different drivers. If you have your own um, charging infrastructure and everything, then you can monitor this 10 from your home. The integrated camera and the mileage capture solves two problems. One is the problem of accountability. So you no longer have the fear of my driver is lying to me. I don't know how much he's making. The driver is happier if he could be more, be more truthful because if he makes 10 Naira, he knows how much is his own from there. And he's going to get more because of course the cost of operation is low. And the second problem of theft of course, the, the, there's already a, G, a, G, a GPS um, system on the tricycle as we speak. So, and it is integrated in all of them. So the location, especially of the battery in the tricycle is tracked everywhere. And it is not something that you can disconnect because the computer is always on. You cannot turn it off. You can turn off the vehicle, but you cannot turn off the control system that integrates all these other systems. Our plan is actually to have this retrofitting kit in a way that anybody can do it. Like the same way um, a, a mechanic can take a tricycle and replace the, the brake cylinder, um, buy a kit from a vendor, replace the brake cylinder, or change the entire brake part, or change the throttle cable, or change the um, clutch cable, or any of those things. We want the retrofitting kit to be a pack that you can buy from us. And then you, you, as the user of the tricycle, can retrofit it yourself. I have a team, and um, my team is uh, currently Greenish Technical Staff. And that's why we are in the we operate in the um, the inverter manufacturing factory. So the the engineers and the technical staff that is here at intervals, I can um, work with any of them. I also have some. Um, Keke mechanics, tricycle mechanics that work with me. We hope to have at least two um, charging stations here in Inigo, mega charging stations, where from where we would distribute batteries to our swapping stations for um, every tricycle user. Well, the, the means we are putting in place to um, get the funding is to talk to um, stakeholders in the industry. We are also looking at um, investors who will be willing to um, invest in this. That's why we have thrown up um, a business model that uh, can actually include everybody. So we have the revived mobility. So we don't have to wait for the market to be ripe 
in a way, maybe when we start having our um, swap, um, charging stations and swapping um, factories. We, and how we hope to do it is, um, Revive Mobility is going to be an investment platform, a transport service company that is going to be open to the general public, to be a PLC. So anybody can invest by buying the Revive Mobility token. So once you have it, it means that you have a part of the business, you have a tricycle, a part of the tricycle running for you. So Revive Mobility would now be a life wire for our manufacturing processes. It's very much still in incubation process, but before the end of this June, we should get it up and running. That we have um, a number of tricycles now under um, the process of retrofitting, so they will be ready before the end of June. So we hope to put all of them on the road to operate on that model, so that we'll see how it works. We are Revive Earth, and we take it one step at a time to make our Earth a better place by removing gasoline vehicles that um, pollute our environment. We are located at number two Concession Road, New Market, Enugu, and uh, you can also find us in the factory here at uh, number kilometer 10 Enugu and Ita Expressway, opposite Air Force Base. And with our line of products, we solve problems for an average commuter and also the tricycle rider and you as the investor.